Hi, this is Daniel, your favorite host of Candy is Dandy. And I can say that because the other two aren't here right now. But before this episode gets going, we just want to tell you about one of our favorite podcasts that we think you should listen to called Smart Mouth. That's Smart Mouth, two words, smart and mouth, two things I have. It's a food history podcast hosted by Catherine Spires, a former food editor at KCET and LA Weekly. Every episode of this podcast is a deep dive into something specific and food related like peaches, or mayonnaise, or Betty Crocker in home economics, or how so much of what we eat is dictated by the military. It sounds crazy, but once you start looking at processed food, you discover a lot of strange happenings. A lot of the guests are celebrities and comedians, so the conversations are always fun. So if you love food, which I know you do, then I know that you're also going to love Smart Mouth. So subscribe to Smart Mouth on your favorite podcast player, because we really think that you're going to like that show as well if you like this one. So subscribe to Smart Mouth. And now for Candy as Dandy. Daniel's the best host of that show. Happy October! Boo! (laughs) Oh, we let a fan into the recording. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> they have one word for us. <laughs> this ghost isn't a fan. <laughs> Welcome to Candy, Candy is Dandy. Oh, no, you guys yeah, I, I, I thought we were doing it all together. We can never get this right. I don't know what I was thinking. Like as I announced it, I was like, is this is this segment even fun yeah. for anybody? <laughs> you you gave us the arms. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to summon a demon. <laughs> it's October, so I tried to I, Yeah, he lit all these candles. He's speaking in Latin. Yeah. He has a really old book I'm not allowed to touch. All of these candles shaped like phalluses. <laughs> are they, is this the wrong one? Or, or are these your everyday candles? I picked them up at a Spencer's. I didn't know where else to get candles. <laughs> the back room of a Spencer's. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Yeah. Okay. This is Candy is Dandy. People must love this. I know. <laughs> and I I raised the gain on oh, all of us oh, saying right, right, it so right. that it really just blows out their speakers I and like their, their brain speakers, <laughs> also known as their eardrums. So this is Daniel Zaffron. Beto Sistos. Greg Gonzalez. And we are <laughs> <laughs> tired. There's not enough days on the weekend. Going home. <laughs> we are not sure how to start this show. Oh, okay, so I have uh, our last episode that came out was our very uh, divisive rattled the nation. Mm-hmm. Will the will there be another civil war just because of this episode? Will the country ever heal from these wounds? No. No, I don't think so. I think these are deep-seated. And they're tricolored, too. These <laughs> wounds are tricolored. It's no longer just north and south. It's north, middle, and south because of the candy corn episode. It's white. Oh, uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> too soon, Daniel. Oh, boy. Uh, it's white versus orange. <laughs> what is the third color on a candy corn Yellow. again? Yellow. So it's white, yellow, orange. Mm, Okay. Well, this is getting offensive. Let's move move past this segment. No, no, no. Dive deeper into it. (laughs) Keep going. Is there another color we can throw into this? (laughs) So after that episode, as we discussed, Melissa, our wife, our our communal wife, yes. Our wife, our brother wife. (laughs) Well, she's our wife. We're brother husbands. We're brother husbands. Sorry. I don't want to... I don't want to get this wrong. (laughs) She deserves... I don't want to confuse anybody. (laughs) She deserves brother husbands. Uh So as we discussed, she is a lover of candy corn. Right. And if you'll remember from that episode, which by the way, we didn't fully address that we had recorded that a while back because we were like, yes. you can't get this stuff this time of year, even though it came out when like most of any grocery store right now is candy corn. So we recorded a while back and it was harder to get candy corn. Let that be said. We weren't just like not going to stores. And, yeah. Like, do they even know how much a gallon of milk is? Have they even <laughs> gone to a grocery store lately? Which, by the way, we should also do next year a candy corn episode of the like weird flavors of candy corn oh, we're right. doing that, now. I like that. So yeah, I'm up for that. Melissa, God bless her, <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. loves candy corn. Uh-huh. And she was a fan 
because we had discussed there was the Brax Brox type of candy corn mm-hmm. right. that was kind of waxy, and that's yeah. what we all knew candy corn to be. But the one we liked best was the CVS one, which was oh, more yeah. like frosting. Yeah, Melissa was has always been a fan of candy corn from the day she was born. Uh-huh. She had a candy corn, a silver candy corn <laughs> in her mouth, <laughs> and she tried the CVS frosting type. Ooh. She liked it much better wow. than the waxy type. I think they figured it out finally, yeah. and they can start to heal these wounds. Yeah. <laughs> this country's wounds. After this three-part civil war <laughs> of white versus... <laughs> it's white versus everyone else. <laughs> I was worried about that because after... I don't know if it was after we did the episode or during where you're like, oh, Melissa likes the candy corn a lot. I'm like, oh no, I've done it. Oh no. <laughs> I've set her against the three of us. Oh no. She's going to have to get a third of a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't we walk away liking candy corn yeah. more than we originally thought? The yeah. frosting kind. The buttercream kind of the buttercream yeah. frosting yeah. kind fondant whatever, but we did we still did not like the no. waxy one. That was still bad. But I felt like we needed to readdress that because it was a little old. So <sighs> yeah, it, they tasted the same as the fresh <laughs> ones I got for five dollars for that little bag. And yeah. honestly, this time, like going to the market this time and seeing a big bag of candy corn, um, it like you wanted it. I was like, ooh, candy corn! Like it, it like <laughs> our episode re- Greg, calibrated my brain. There was all, Greg was once in this experiment where there was this piece of cheese and he, <laughs> he kept trying to grab it and they would electrocute him and he still loves cheese. I uh, uh, now every time I eat cheese, I'm like, where's the sensation? <laughs> why why am I getting? Where's that's the kick? A little uh, pick me up. <laughs> I still have no desire, even though we kind of like the the other kind. I'm not going out right now and buying a bag. Yeah, of that no, candy I'm not cord. either. More for me. If there's like, if I see one on the floor, <laughs> I mean, anything on the floor, I'll eat it. <laughs> so now it's time Good to boy. get into Uh-oh. candy news. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, little boy. Hello. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful day to be alive? Oh, yeah, it is. Would you mind touching this piece of cheese? Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) I love cheese. I forgot to connect it to the electrical thing. It was actually. I just get really excited when I touch cheese. (laughs) He hasn't touched food in so long. That's how he reacts to to touching any sort of cheese. Thank you for the news. You can leave the cheese. Goodbye, sir. (laughs) No, leave the cheese. (laughs) Oh, my God. Immediately had a heart attack. <laughs> Just by touching the cheese, his arteries got clogged because it's been so long. So, as you know, I now like to title all of our candy news right. topics. This one is called Booey-licious. Mm. Michelle, and they're all first drafts? Mis- <laughs> first draft, best draft. <laughs> Michelle Williams of Destiny's Child mm-hmm. fame has released a new song called Candy Corn Love. <gasps> Whoa! Professing really? her love for... <gasps> Brax Brox. She pronounces Aww. it like not like the guy from Space Ghost. So oh, Brox. Yeah. She pronounces Brox. it Brox. It's a song about her love for candy corn. Wow. And it goes a little something like this. Sing it, Daniel. Mm. Uh, and let me introduce my guest, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, she, she lost her voice. Beyonce, can you touch this piece of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> she got her voice back. Okay, she's got to go back to. She was stronger New York? than the electricity. <laughs> yeah. What? She blew the circuit. It just made her stronger. Yeah, that was the cheese that squealed. <laughs> <laughs> we all squealed when Beyonce. <laughs> we all squeal for Beyonce. That, and that's our first t shirt. <laughs> so the song goes like this It's the season. Today's the day. Candy corn is on the way. Couldn't wait for it to get here. Yeah, give me a beat. Someone give me a beat. Someone touch the cheese for a little bit. <laughs> I don't want... Wait, no, they don't sing about scrubs. Um, They do want scrubs. Couldn't wait for it to get here. Everybody sing with me. If you love it, say Brock's Candy Corn. Team Candy Corn. Whoa. That's like a commercial, basically. It was... Is she a a character in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas now? (laughs) Yeah. She's the one who starts chasing a little boy around his house on Halloween. (laughs) So she also... She then dances with a little bowl of candy corn. That's cute. It pretty much is a ad. Like, it's all... It's some sort of collaboration that they're doing. Uh, It's a promotion with them to desperately try to get people to like candy corn. But as of... This episode's coming out October 5th. You have until tomorrow, October 6th, to comment on her Instagram Instagram post about oh. this for a chance to win a year's supply of candy corn. Is that a punishment? Um. <laughs> <laughs> the worst comment wins. We should do an official candy is dandy 
comment saying, "Oh my God, okay. have you tried CVS brand candy?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want. I look as a fan of free things. Uh, I will take your year of candy corn. Your wife will love you forever. Our <laughs> wife will love. Yeah, we'll love you forever. <laughs> if she, if someone knocks on the door and it's Michelle Williams <laughs> with a year's worth of candy corn, it's the two Michelle Williams. It's the actress <laughs> and the singer. I got the wrong one. Yeah. Right? Well, the other Michelle Williams brings you the CVS brand, uh, and then Beyonce comes for. And some then, yeah, reason. for some still reason, still Beyonce. She follows. Michelle Williams around. With white with Michelle Williams. What are you doing? <laughs> I would really like this song. What's it called again? Candy Corn Love? It's called Candy Corn Love by Michelle Williams. I would love it if this was this generation's Monster Mash. Like it yeah. just like... like <laughs> <laughs> the candy corn. <laughs> it was a candy corn. It was a candy corn. <laughs> it's just no other words than candy corn. I was listening to a podcast late one night. That's what we should get a listener to write a Monster Mash mm -hmm. song Ooh. about candy corn. CVS, specifically CVS, CVS brand. Specifically the CVS mm -hmm. brand. And look, when we get sponsored by CVS, you're not getting any of the money, listener. This is all going to us. <laughs> You'll get the glory. Yeah. You won't get the money. Yeah. First comes the glory. <laughs> then we get the money. <laughs> so that's the end of our candy news. He's already gone. He's, I, I guess he, no, no, he's still there. He's on the floor with having a heart attack. <laughs> That's his heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to resuscitate him. <laughs> He's doing it to what he thinks is the beat of Saturday Night Live. Uh, Saturday Night. No, Staying Alive. That's what Staying the song is. <laughs> it's not Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Definitely not that. It's not Saturday Night Fever. Staying Alive Fever. <laughs> Which is what this kid does not have. <laughs> okay, so let's get into our candy for this week. I wanted to pick one mm -hmm. because we have some listeners not from this, not of this world, as the oh. bumper, as the Jesus bumper stickers say. They are not from this country. And some of the things like sweet tarts or look bars, they're like, I'd love to try it. Mm. But unfortunately, I live in a country that has health care. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful country with health care and no McDonald's in sight. Sure, you can have a longer life expectancy. We have look bars. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here for a long time. We're here for a look time. Um... That didn't work out as good as I thought it was. We're here for a Saturday night fever. <laughs> so I wanted to pick a candy that was something that is more common, like Snickers, of course. Right, Anyone right, can get right. a yeah. Snickers, but something that is more common and also made in another country. So this is our first oh, international okay. candy. We're doing Toblerones. Ooh. I came here to do two things today. Eat Toblerone and kick ass. <laughs> and there's plenty of Toblerone. <laughs> and I've kicked enough ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I kicked an ass on the way here. Uh, you foolishly forgot, you Beto foolishly forgot it's, to get a Toblerone. I'm relying on the kindness of others. <laughs> I'd love to give you half my Toblerone. <laughs> what is, I told you we're not in one of those countries with health care. <laughs> We've got the standard Toblerone and then we have a few varieties that I'll get to when, when it's time. Settle. Everyone settle. <laughs> Don't even look at them. Start. I'm actually really excited because I have no idea what is inside of a Toblerone. Oh, wow. oh really? It, it's zero. I don't think I've ever eaten a Toblerone wow. in my entire life. This is exciting. Hang on. Yeah. Now, this is a podcaster. This <laughs> is a guy who saved, because I told you everything before we started. I told you Melissa loved candy corn. I told you all the history. <laughs> I told you what we were going to do to the little newsboys <laughs> today. But that is this is shocking that you've never had a Toblerone. This yeah. is exciting. Yeah. I'm very excited right now. I've never now. walked by and said... I want that triangle box. Oh, okay. So you just hate Toblerone. <laughs> <laughs> the to I don't know. We don't know Toblerone. yet. Toblerone. It's funny you say that. Uh-oh. It's uh -oh. funny you say that. Oh, well, it's fun that I said my racist <laughs> joke. No follow-up. No follow-up. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> I ne Never do I hear that. Well, that's just plain funny. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny, Greg. <laughs> but I'm also not a chocolate boy like you. That's yeah, true. That's true. But, true. But Toblerone? Okay, we'll see what you have to say mm -hmm. about it. Because it has, I am a big fan of this candy, but it has been a few years. And much like Butterfinger, although kind of mm. different, there have been changes okay. to Toblerone uh -oh. in recent years. I, it was a while where I was frequenting um, Switzerland, a little store called Cost Plus World Market, which has mm. like fancy Euro candy. Mm. I don't know another European. Fancy is a, a, like just because it's from Europe. To, look, as someone who lived in France for a year <laughs> uh, and also read the Silmarillion, <laughs> as I've been bragging to everybody. <laughs> with the new Lord of the Rings show. You're one of six people who read it, including Tolkien. <laughs> Tolkien's the sixth he did, one. He died halfway through. <laughs> I can't finish this. I finished it because I was bored of reading it. <laughs> Look, and just because it's from Europe doesn't mean it's elegant. I agree. Okay? I agree. Look at the box. <laughs> it is a fancy box, though. Well, actually, this candy has more health care than we do <laughs> because it's from Switzerland. So let's let's just get into the history of this okay. so that we can eat this. If this is Toblerone, then I don't want to be Toblerite. <laughs> 
it, that's is, funny. Yeah, okay. I was waiting for someone to tell me that was funny. If Greg can get it. <laughs> that, that was a, a quality joke, sure. I, I also laugh at the idea of you at two in the morning being like, God, I got to crack this. It's funny because I'll often write down like things I have to do for the day. Yeah. And often on that list is come up with a pun for a, for a Toblerone. Yeah. And that's before we started doing this. You better leave that pause in there too. When you edit, no. Yeah. no keep no, this show hang. tight. <laughs> No laughter, <laughs> just nonsensical things said with no, that nobody can process. All out of context. <laughs> like I said, we're going international for this one. We're venturing to the widest part of the very white Europe, Switzerland. Whoa. Which I know some people think Sweden is Switzerland, and Switzerland is Sweden. This is the one that's next to France and Italy and Germany. Okay. The neutral one. Not the one in the north, the neutral one. The neutral one. The one that uh, refused to denounce evil during World War II <laughs> <laughs> because they wanted to see how it went. I don't want to take sides here. I'm a middle child in a divorce. I don't take sides. I'm a peacekeeper. I, I don't want to take sides. I'll let evil run rampant. <laughs> We're already putting down Switzerland. Yeah, so, sorry, Switzerland. <laughs> to start, a Toblerone, so you know, is a chocolate bar that comes in a line of triangular points made out of chocolate, honey, and almond nougat. So we've got Chocolate. nougat again, but mm. don't think it's going to be chewy like uh, a uh, Snickers. Or, okay. Uh, okay. Also, that's Snickers is not Switzerland or Sweden, <laughs> just so you don't get confused. Uh, it's another neutral country, though, but it's not either of those. <laughs> is countries. it Florida? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The most neutral place in America, Florida. <laughs> Florida. It's kind of crunchy. Like, okay. it, it, I, I'm warning you, it may get a little stuck in your teeth, mm -hmm. oh. but not as bad as a okay. Butterfinger, right. but it's more crunchy than chewy. The story begins in that continental country that just can't seem to pick a side that is Switzerland way back in 1868 Ooh, wow. with a guy named Gene Tobler who owned a candy store in Bern. Swiss Bern. Uh, oh, I, I, good. that's good. I see. Uh, I, I need an explanation. Yeah. I was waiting for anybody to, to <laughs> jump in on anything. I was like, please don't make me say this. <laughs> Please don't make me say what I'm about to no say. No one's making you say anything. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, they are. I can feel the weight of the fans on my shoulder. As I said, I used to, I lived in Europe for a little bit. So I've been to Bern. Ooh, la, I've been la. to Bern. Uh, it's like a, sort of like a mountainous. I mean, everything in Switzerland is sort of... It's a nice little town. It's not big. Yeah. It's beautiful. Nestled in the mountains. Yeah. Is Bern where they have Burning Man? Mm. Yeah, it, but it's a little <laughs> different. It's spelled with an E. Uh, no hippies allowed. It's just a bunch of uh, pretty well-to-do white people. <laughs> so Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> so Switzerland, of course, is renowned for their chocolate, but Tobler's shop seemed to stand out because in 1899, he had to open up his own factory to keep up with demand, and the company Fabrique de Chocolat de Burn, Ooh. Tobler et C, was born. That man speaks French. But, yeah. Uh, I read the Silmarillion. So, do you want, would you want me to say it in Elvish? Or the language of the Urukai? Or should I say it was burn? <laughs> There's a lot of Dude, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fun. I'm not, I'm not keeping up with this. I'm lost. Well, oh, would you say you're a burn victim? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all burned out, man. I mean, <laughs> so then came the year 1900. Burn? <laughs> 1900 and burn? Uh, uh, new century, who dis? Uh, Gene Tobler's son, that's who. God, I threw a lot of stupid things in this one. Uh, I was really on one when I was... You, you shouldn't write something when you're so dehydrated. You should probably drink a little water and then write, write something out. So his son, Theodore... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I like I was writing the name so many times and now as I say it I'm like, oh I should have done something about the not the three musketeers. Chipmunks? America's three musketeers. <laughs> chipmunks. The chipmunks. There's actually four chipmunks. There are, aren't there? No. No. Yeah. What? Oh, there's there's uh, D'Artagnan and yeah. the three chipmunks. <laughs> his son Theodore took over, but in nineteen oh eight, Theodore and his cousin Emil Bowman, who is the great grandfather of Roger Federer, the Whoa! tennis player? Really? Yeah, the Amazing. one who just announced his retirement. Wow. wow! So he was my favorite. So they decided to try something new. There is an Italian candy made out mm. of our old friend nougat okay. and almonds that is called torone, which is also the Italian word for nougat. Torone. Torone. Switzerland has a big Italian influence on it. So this candy was known to Theodore and Emil. So they decide to incorporate it into their chocolate by mixing in little crushed bits of this. Okay. And it's not like I was saying, it's not like I've never had that, but I mm -hmm. squished it in the store, which was at World Market, actually. Mm -hmm. I was squishing it. It's not as soft as like 
a Three Musketeers okay. or a, a Three Chipmunks right. um, or what's in a Snickers. It's harder. So they cut that up, mixed it into the chocolate and added some honey. And as they say in parts of Switzerland, voila, <laughs> a new candy was born. But what to name it? The weird nonsensical name of this treat is a portmanteau of the family name Tobler and the name of the candy that's inside of it, Torone. Toblerone, which means maybe it's supposed to be pronounced Toblerone. Mm, Toblerone. Yeah. But that's where the name comes from. Wow, okay. If I ever met somebody who called it a Toblerone, I would roll my <laughs> eyes so hard that the earth would shake. I, I eat a Toblerone in my Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> so this was supposedly the first chocolate bar to have stuff in it. Oh, like wow. not just like not just chocolate, which I couldn't confirm, but it, it was also the first either just milk chocolate bar or candy bar in general to be intellectually protected because mm. in 1909 they had their production process patented. Wow. So this okay. was the first time that like copyright, like yeah. no one is stealing this. Another weird connection uh, that one of my candy bars has to the atomic bomb, which Whoa. listening to these episodes, like we kind of bring up the atomic bomb a lot on this yeah. show. I don't know if you realize that, but we do. So the patent office in Bern, where they got this patent. Would you call it a Bern ward? <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> no, what does that mean? <laughs> Is this like a Sweden joke or something? <laughs> so a few years later in this office was where Albert Einstein worked, where he came up with the theory of relativity oh in that office. God. So another connection to wow. the- Eating a Toblerone. Eating Toblerone. No this socks. The most shoes elevated candy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he actually touched a piece of cheese and that's how his hair got <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Switzerland, so fondue. Um, what's so especially unique about these Toblerones were the shape. You've at least, you haven't had it, but you've seen what they look like outside of this yeah, container, right? I know the reference that I think you're going go to right get right to. I'm going to get to that. Yep. I would, like, I, when I was writing that, I was like, Beto's going to love this. Yep. <laughs> so that's my association with Toblerones. That's interesting that, that you sort of reverse engineered it of what a Toblerone <laughs> <Yeah>. is. <laughs> you tried biting onto a big piece of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> what's the fuss? Not quite. <laughs> That's why you never bought it. Who wants little pieces of concrete <laughs> in, in a biodegradable box? That doesn't make sense. With health insurance. I have to mix this with water and it dries and I eat it? So like I said, it comes in a line of triangles. Like it's like a, I guess there's a base and then mm -hmm. it's shaped like triangles yeah. that you can break off. And it has the little letter imprinted on them. To, each one has T-O-B-L-E-R-O-N-E, oh, wow. Toblerone. Oh, wow. Use okay. it in a sentence also. Uh, my Toblerone is birdie. <laughs> <laughs> my Toblerone has a first name. The reason for this, for this shape, the triangle, it's been completely clouded over the years. So we're never really going to mm. get an answer. The popular answer to this, and maybe the correct one, is that they were made to mimic the peaks of the Swiss Alps. Oh. In particular, the Matterhorn, which is on the packaging. You can see yeah, the Matterhorn. Okay. And there's a little, some kind of... Hmm. Snowman inside an oh. double snowman <laughs> and some sort of bobsled where your little brother who's taller than you has to ride behind yeah. and cradle. We have to all hold each other with our knees when we eat this. <laughs> the company's official stance is that it was triangle because they wanted to be different and not just another square mm. or rectangular candy bar, but like. It almost is like, what's it called? Where like, it might not be true or it's not, may not be con like a truism mm -hmm. right. of like, how could it not be the Swiss Alps? Like yeah. it's Switzerland. It has the Matterhorn on the box. Like yeah. how could it not be that? But did it always have the... It was From the beginning, it was shaped had, like that. And it always had this package. No, 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 no. It did not always have the mm. Matterhorn on it. Mm. Oh. They maybe just subconsciously yeah. it was influenced and I I, made that I would shape. imagine everything Swiss people do is like... At least a little bit influenced by the Alps yeah. of like, how are we going to, what, what shape are we going to make this roof? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but a question, is the original family still in control of that company or the um, original founder? They are owned by a bigger conglomerate that I'll, okay. I'll mention, but I believe they're NATO. still involved. So, okay. What? NATO. Yeah. They, <laughs> Russia's not happy about <laughs> this. Yeah. That's another thing of like maybe this other company. Well, okay. Let me get to the okay. third okay. story. Yeah, yeah. The sons of Theodore, Alvin and Simon, <laughs> they claim that their dad got the idea for the shape after seeing a burlesque show in Paris where mm. the girls all formed a series of human pyramids uh -huh. and this made him so horny that he never <laughs> forgot it. That's what his sons claim. I swear no, to God. That's, yeah, that makes a lot more sense than them. That's more European, yeah. Subconsciously like seeing triangles everywhere. Yeah. I mean, we talk about truism. <laughs> we know how men think. 
if I if I put this candy in a <laughs> triangle shape, then it, they'll kiss me. Is that how? It if works? I shape it like those girls and then put it into a computer, it'll make me girls. <laughs> <laughs> and then I make the computer touch a piece of cheese and it gets electrocuted. <laughs> like, why would the Suns lie about yeah, that? No, yeah, that's yeah, too yeah, hardcore. Yeah. Why would it not be the Alps? Like the one I believe least is the official story from the company. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I, we're, we're never going to know really. They're just covering up a dark, <laughs> I know, a, a dark, horny secret. <laughs> There's nothing about people stacked in a shape that makes them more arousing. Okay. Consider, yeah, you know I mean? consider this was like 1909 okay. where like if you saw a, if you saw a woman's ankle, like you went to prison. <laughs> consider that. But, <laughs> I don't know what Daniel. Going. Daniel's a little nervous for some yeah. reason right now. Talking about he's, ankles, he's thinking of women in shapes. <laughs> we, we talked about ankles and my pop guard that was standing up deflated. You're in the back of the room. Do an octagon now, <laughs> rhombus. Come here, rhombus. You gotta pay big money for that. Yeah, in the back room they'll do a rhombus for it. Hey, would you like a private rhombus dance? <laughs> do a cube, 3D cube. <laughs> hey kids, do you like pentagrams? <laughs> The, the smut shop on the corner just has like textbook, like geometry books. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. This is good. Do you have any mathematicians work? Do you have a graphing calculator? Yeah. Before there was like pornography, there was just calculator. <laughs> Boobless. <laughs> I, I didn't go so far to spell boobies. I just spelled boob. I couldn't handle more than one. I never made it that far. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever the reason, Toblerone was a hit and it spread around Europe, much like COVID. It, it became so known and commonplace that the concrete defense lines that Switzerland put up around their borders during World War II and work, World War II. That was, uh, that was Lo- Looney Tunes version of World War II. Yeah, when Chuck Jones and Dr. Seuss had to make cartoons, they made World War II. So they were called the Toblerone line because they were triangle shaped. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were talking about? That's interesting. So that's how important Toblerones are to the Swiss people. They're like, let's make a whole war out of them. (laughs) So I'm not sure when they came to the U.S., but they had a coming out party of sorts in 1964 when they were featured at the New York World Fair. In 1969, they mixed things up and started doing a dark chocolate version. In 1970 is when they added a picture of the Matterhorn on their iconic okay. yellow triangle okay. packaging. Okay, you don't have a box. Let's rub it in his face. Mm. Man, go. But Greg, what, when you look at the Matterhorn on the box, what do you see? The Matterhorn. But what do you see in oh, the Matterhorn? A, is that a mountain goat? Yeah, oh, it's what? a mountain goat. No, it's a bear, you idiot. <laughs> That's not horns coming out of here. Kid, can someone Does the matter? toss me one? Okay. Oh wow! Yeah, Good cat. Got it. That's great. One handed. What are you, Roger Federer? <laughs> yeah. Let me see this goat. He hit it back to him. Oh yeah, that's a goat. That's not a goat. <laughs> a goat doesn't stand on two legs. Look at that. There's horns. A goat doesn't have little ears. That's a bear. When he's jumping, they're like they <laughs> they jump. Look at those okay. hooves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that there were bears in those mountains. Burn means bear. Oh. So their their whole thing well, is. Why didn't like, you say that sooner? Yeah. I didn't want to bury the bear. Bear neither lead. <laughs> I'm barely legal. <laughs> You're a third degree bear. <laughs> yeah, it's totally a bear. Swiss bear. It's totally a bear. Yeah, I could see a bear now. It's a cutie bear. The shadow of a bear in because they're obsessed with bears there. I don't know why. I think the story is like... You don't know, come at me like, why would it be a mountain goat? It makes way more sense than a bear or a bird. Sorry. <laughs> there probably used to be bears. I know there's some story of like a guy killed a lion. I don't know. Uh, maybe we're you're talking. Getting your animals confused. You're getting, okay. Do bears still exist there, or have they been hunted to extinction? I can't. I mean, there's a zoo, so yeah. But yeah. I can't. Well, I can't. The, the zoo has lions, tigers, and burns. <laughs> um, <laughs> goats. The goats are employees. Lions, tigers, and burns. Uh, mon Dieu. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the story is, but they're obsessed with bears. It's like the official animal of Switzerland, or maybe of just burn. So, all right, let's move off this. The bear. Bernstein bears. Oh, oh my, my god. god! We've unraveled universal questions. You mean? The Bernstein bears. Whatever it is. Oh, my God. The Nelson Mandela bears. Mandela? Mandela. No, I pronounce it Mandela. It's a, it's a whole other... It's a whole, it's a whole other Mandela effect. So, okay, let's leave the bear behind. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Leave the Moving behind. on. So around this time, the company merged in the 70s with Souchard, who are the makers of Milka. If you've ever had a Milka no, chocolate bar. I, I Sounds familiar, maybe. They're very good. I'm okay. excited for that. They have a lot of variety. Also Swiss chocolate? 
I think they're actually German. Like, they oh. want you to think they're Swiss, but yeah. I believe they're actually German. All right. uh, much like the Nazis is escaped. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so in 1985, they moved their production to Brunnen, which is just outside of Bern, where they also have a farm of 14,000 cows who make milk exclusively for oh, Toblerones. Wow. Could you imagine? That's the life. If yeah, I was a cow. The, I know. Holy like, shit. you're never going to be eaten. Yeah. You're like, this is going towards a good cause. You have your own car, I bet. I bet they're so rich today. They don't drive it. They just have it. But when a bear, one of the wild roaming bears of Switzerland gets into that field, that's all you got to look out for. Is that a mountain goat? I think they have bear Toblerones that they put around. Yeah. <laughs> they're like bear traps, but they're triangle shaped. So in 1995, a Swedish politician named Mona Salin had her career derailed because she was caught using a state-issued credit card to buy groceries that included two Toblerones, and this entire scandal was called the Toblerone Affair. Whoa. <laughs> was it like essentials? Was the scandal like she was buying essentials and they, then they like... They made the thing seem like she bought a Toblerone with a government credit card, right. but it was like she was buying stuff, I'm sure, for like the office, right. and mm-hmm. two Toblerones were in there, and oh, they're yeah. like, what does a politician need Toblerones for? This is the essentials she said she needed? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll find out if it's an essential. The next controversy came in 2016. This is what I I was talking about. When citing rising production costs in Europe due to Brexit, they severely reduced the size of the triangles per bar. Ooh. So it used to be just like, it's it's absurd the amount of gaps that they had. They claim that they supposedly brought back the normal size in 2018, but we'll see about that. But oh. it, it was... It was insulting. Like you could drive a <laughs> a Hot Wheels car in between oh. the gaps. It was it was really the mountains were spreading because of climate change. Yeah, it was <laughs> climate, yeah, that's what climate change does. Yeah, it moves space <laughs> in between the Toblerones. <laughs> the next controversy that they're going to have, future Ooh. controversy, wow. will be in 2023 when part of the production is going to be moving out of Switzerland to Bratislava, Slovakia. Whoa, which is um. No, it has no mountains. <laughs> they do have a lot of mountain goats, though, weirdly. <laughs> they, they can't put those two things together. <laughs> Which, I mean, I dare say that that's uh, not a good thing. Like, I'm sure money and all mm-hmm, this, yeah. whatever, I understand money is a thing people have, but like, it's Swiss chocolate and yeah. you're no longer going to be making it in Switzerland. How yeah. is it still? It's like exactly. uh, it's like champagne or mm-hmm. uh, or blue cheese or... Alvin and the Chipmunks or whatever, but like, how how can you still call yourself Swiss chocolate if yeah. you're no longer made in Switzerland? Sw- uh, quote what? unquote Swiss. <laughs> We're chocolate. Swedish chocolate now. <laughs> What's going to happen to the cows, though? Oh, that's my, my God. real concern. There's going to be a lot of Swiss steaks uh, co- <laughs> coming in 2023. I don't, I don't know how that's going to turn out. So it's good we're getting it now. Yeah. So they make up 40 percent of Switzerland's chocolate export, Toblerones. Whoa. Whoa. Really? So I, I feel like that's going to be a blow to their economy. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. there have been 11 varieties over the years, including white chocolate. Of course, it's Switzerland. <laughs> Fruit and nut, and also a giant one that's over two and a half feet long. Wow. Wow. They are now owned by Mondelez, which I believe is the international name for craft. Okay. okay. So that's who owns them now. And wow. the secret tip to eating them, because hmm. normally when you're breaking off a triangle, your instinct is to pull it. Yeah. The trick is to push inwards. Oh. That's the, so we're going to test we'll test out both ways. Okay, okay. So, uh let's get to our tasting. So you two are going to have to share. Greg, yeah. uh let's first open it just to get the ease of opening. First oh, off, where yeah. did you get yours? I got it on a gas station where I get all my good candy. Name this gas station. It's a Chevron on Jackson and Glen Oak. Gomer's filling station? Yeah, it's Gomer. Gomer has oh, all wow. the European chocolate. I was filling up to go to uh Cosplus World Market to buy it. Yeah. And then I was at the gas station and they have like a fancy, like with like flake and all those nice candies. There is the variety that gas stations seem to, or the control gas stations seems to have over what they can sell is great because there are some gas stations that have unbelievable international candy selections. My favorite candy shop is the Shell gas station on, oh my God, it's right by Brand Library. It's like a- In Glendale, California. In Glendale, California. (laughs) <laughs> I don't even remember the name of the street now. But yeah, there's a Shell gas station in Glendale by the Brennan Library that has, my, it's my favorite candy shop. Glendale, today, but, which wow. has a pretty big international population, so that's not surprising. Yeah, very true. 
Yeah, I got mine at World Market because I knew I, I actually was Target didn't have it, uh-huh. and I knew that they had them there. And I actually looked at Ralph's, and they had one of the varieties. They mm. did not have the standard Toblerone wow. Ralphs, really? which is crazy. doesn't make any sense. But I got mine at World Market. Mine, I had a birthday coupon. Whoa. Birthday's coming up, Show so off. I got it for Ooh. two two fifty. Okay, how much was yours? I think like three fifty. Ooh, I got two, and oh, it came man. out to like six and some change. So it must have been up there. Chump. Maybe you should have, you should have had a birthday. I got mine from Greg for yeah. free. <laughs> <laughs> no, Greg will be charging you. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Okay, so there's like a little this also like the shape of this and the feel is very like because of the Swiss thing, it feels very like it being uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, I know. There there's no other candy bar shaped like like it almost yeah. I almost feel bad for the people who have to stock them cuz like they they I feel like these would just fall all over the floor. Yeah. So you pull the tab, it opens up pretty easily, you see? And then it comes off like that. Oh, wow. And it comes out. Oh, the gaps are gone. I can feel it already. The gaps are gone. Uh, Yeah, I need to. I'll have to show you a picture. Mm -hmm. My only complaint, and I know this from experience, is that the foil kind of gets in the way of of the Toblerone. Do you take it? Out of the box entirely. I kind of go like like it's a salami, and I oh, just right. like leave it sort of partially in the yeah. package. So I'm not going to eat any yet. I'll smell it and uh, break off a couple pieces for him okay. and give it to him. So I'll give you half of mine. Oh wow, that's very generous. And also the foil breaks off so easily, so yeah. it's not even like you can peel it back. It kind of makes a mess with the foil. Yeah, I mean, I had one yesterday Ooh. to Ooh. remind myself what it was like. A lot of the foil was sticking to the candy. Oh, see, it says Toblerone right there. Oh, the yeah, side. yeah. Okay, I'm, I will take it completely out just so I can see that. Oh, no, mine broke in half because I dropped it. Yeah, it says Toblerone and then some. There's a couple on the end that are just blank. Mine's already kind of melty, which is a an issue, but, you know, I expect... It is a little melt. meltier than I thought it would be, but it is a little warm in here. It's not it's yeah. not like it was a few weeks ago because like I, I was so glad that we weren't doing a chocolate candy a few weeks ago when we had a heat wave oh, in Los right. Angeles because anything that wasn't like plastic in my in my apartment was <laughs> melted. Okay, so give it a, give it a sniff, everybody. Gonna give it a sniff. Yeah, that's real chocolate. Oh, wow. That's like that's strong, delightful. rich chocolate. This is good chocolate. Okay, so let's first try breaking it off by pulling it towards you and okay. see how that goes. Oh, it actually went pretty easy for me. <laughs> well, it's melty, so it's going to like go maybe. easy. Yeah, yeah, maybe because of the meltiness. I'm but it was it. very easy. On our second bite, we will do a a, way. Uh, the other way. So, first triangle. First Toblerone ever. Mm, going in. Go. Now you say there's bits of cement in the base? <laughs> is that what you're saying? Do you feel the crunch? Like, it's yeah. almost like there's little pebbles in there, it. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting that. I had one yesterday, and I was wondering if pieces of my teeth were like <laughs> we're breaking, we're off. breaking off i'm like did i eat tooth it's because of the honey it's sort of getting stuck in my mm-hmm. throat a little bit and because of those chewy things it, yeah. it also it has a a it's not quite a, like a crunch bar or a texture yeah but it does give it a, a grit i would call yeah, it yeah mm-hmm. as your first bite of a toblerone what do you think of what you just had i'm kind of eh I'm kind of eh about okay. it. Mm-hmm. They are good. They're not the strongest chocolatey flavor, yeah. which I like better. Mm-hmm. But the texture, like it's an interesting texture yeah. and an interesting twist on chocolate. Yeah. The honey really like sells the chocolate. The honey, I think, yeah. is what's dampening the chocolate yeah. taste. It shines through. The honey really shines through. Okay. Let's break it off by pushing it in. Oh. I mean, they both work this time. Oh, yeah. I've had experiences where I've tried pulling it out and it takes like one and a half triangles. Right. So I could see in a frostier environment, maybe. I like the yeah. unit of measurement for this is a triangle. <laughs> it took two triangles to... One Nazi defense later. <laughs> you know what? The little pebbles, they just seem kind of stale. Yeah. They have like the texture of something that's stale. Mm-hmm. That's the texture of that Tarone. Yeah. It's kind of an old candy Tarone, mm-hmm. like an old Italian candy, which are kind of stale and (laughs) and often gross. I'm letting it melt in my mouth a little bit Mm. because the chocolate is pretty good. Yeah, real creamy. mm -hmm. Real creamy. Real creamy. I like Like that. Like rich chocolate, Mm -hmm. milk chocolate. A moment of silence for all those cow's udders that are being (laughs) sapped dry. I think I would like this more if it was just chocolate and not the center. Maybe the varieties. Yeah, maybe Maybe the the, varieties. Okay, I'm going to slice one open just to see what it looks like. Yeah, it, it almost, you know what's funny is it almost, when you look at it from the inside, if you want to slice one open, it kind of looks like a snow-covered Alp, like a snow-covered Matterhorn, because there's the white chunks in it. It's kind of interesting, yeah. actually. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's kind of fun. 
It's a- I could imagine that Swiss kids in the early 1900s were amusing themselves <laughs> to no ends like this. The only other fun thing to do was to go to the patent office. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time where I was really into Toblerones, yeah. but then someone that I worked with caught on to that and like got me maybe a Toblerone like once every three months. Oof. And I was like, eh, I think like this is a once in a year sort of yeah. thing. Okay, so let's, let's get into the varieties we have. Okay. So um, what we have, we have Toblerone white, which I'm not looking forward to. Okay. We have Toblerone dark, which I'm very much looking forward to because mm-hmm. I think maybe that might have a stronger chocolate yeah. taste that I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. And then we have salted caramelized, I almost said onions, uh, salted caramelized <laughs> almonds and then honey and almond nougat. Oof, That's that the one I'm good. looking forward yeah. to. I do look, because I think they're like those candied almonds where they like mix them in like mm-hmm. sugar and stuff. So I do like that. Which one do you want to try? Let's do white chocolate yeah, first because that's yeah. not going to be good. Mm-hmm. I have it. It's a it, it's a hefty bar though. Uh, they're all pretty heavy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it is maybe more expensive than because it's Swiss and yeah. you, it, it has its own health insurance and you're, so you're paying <laughs> for that. But it's a pretty good bang for your buck. Like compared to a Snickers, which is what nowadays like a dollar 50 or a dollar maybe depending on where you get it like you're gonna get a lot more chocolate out of a Toblerone did it get stuck in your teeth it did yeah the little the little chunks it's not as bad as a Butterfinger no not nearly as bad what are you experiencing as you open that how does it look Um, to you it's kind of hard I mean I'm just gonna rip it out if you try to like control open it it's kind of hard to do yeah it'll take time Mm -hmm. very subtle very subtle white chocolate smell not as fragrant as the milk chocolate one was now give it give us each a couple of those yeah I'm gonna start a desperation in your voice when you're asking give give me me a little bit of that (laughs) what is that it looks really good over there (laughs) the white chocolate uh, it looks more like the Alps, which I'm it into. It does. This yeah. is we just had like springtime Alps, yeah. and now we're having winter Alps. Oh, also, you could call me Alps if you want, because <laughs> you're white. Yeah, you know what? It smells almost. Uh, it almost has like a. I think what I'm thinking of is it's a sm- is since it's white chocolate, it smells more like a gummy candy or that, mm. that sort oh, of candy right. to yeah. me because it's less more of like a floral. Floral. I was mm-hmm. going to say that, like, yeah. this smells kind of like perfume. And I was like, yeah. don't say that. You're going to think you stupid. Yeah. I pushed them inwards and I created the Whoa. three lady shape that oh. made them so horny. Oh, <laughs> my God. Uh, could you make a run this, please? <laughs> All right. Let's try this and see how it goes. Mm-hmm. No. For a little bit, I was thinking mm-hmm. maybe, maybe this is the white chocolate I like. But as I swallowed it, it got that strong, like, yeah. cocoa butter, white chocolate flavor yeah. that I don't like. It, it started out kind of strong for me, but no, I, I don't like that. Yeah. To be honest, it's kind of reminding me of cheese, and it's grossing mm. me out. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. cheesy. And it's more, like, waxy than creamy. Yeah. I mean, that's the white chocolate thing. It's mm-hmm. always a little waxier, but it's, like, I know Swiss people like fondue, and this is, like, there's so many correlations, and we were talking about cheese with the newsboy oh. before. Like, it's reminding me of cheese, and it's kind of grossing me yeah, out. Yeah, now that you said that, I can't have <laughs> another one. I'm sorry I put cheese in everybody's head. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of gross. So, what do you want to do next? Dark chocolate or the uh, caramelized almonds? Let's do the caramel. Yeah. Okay, so same thing. It's fun to open. It's a fun It is fun to open. to open. And you can also kind of, well, maybe not. I was going to say you could <laughs> reseal it, but it broke apart <laughs> in my hands. Okay. You can just toss it to me. Don't double toss. No! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. All right, Craig, let's see what you can do. I'm going to go right. Uh, right into my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it looks exactly like the milk chocolate one. Yeah, the caramel must be in the, the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Much like uh, the old man from Treasure of the Sierra Madre was saying, there's caramel up in the mountains. That's why we frack, guys. <laughs> oh, I tried to push it in and I broke the peak. Oh, oh the Swiss are not going to be happy about that. And I don't see any caramel. What? They're, they're, it's caramelized. There's not caramel in it. It's oh. caramelized almonds. So if you look at it, you can see the chunks of almonds with the chunks of the Tarone. I misunderstood and I am less yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you had those. Like they'll make it on like the street in some places where they're like pan frying up almonds and sugar and stuff. And those Ooh. are really good. Okay, let's do so it. So let's say in the traditional milk chocolate. Yeah. Very nice smell. Got a good taste to it. A little bit of like... Mm, that's, nut, it's a little nutty. That's better. The the saltiness from the yeah. almond yep. really elevated That's what it is, yeah. Elevated that it. was missing. Yeah. Oh my God. That is a lot better than a oh, standard yeah. Toblerone. Yeah. 100%. And like just a little bit of like a nutty taste mm-hmm. to yeah. it too. Yeah. That is very good. That Honestly, that bumped up with the rating oh, yeah. I'm going to give on this a lot. 
And then the true crunchiness from the almond yeah. is kind of what you're expecting from those little nougat bits. They almost work together. Mm-hmm. The, the, the It's less gravelly and more like an actual crunch that you want in food. Wow, <laughs> that is excellent. That was pretty good. Okay, so you want to get into the dark chocolate, which I'm most looking forward to. Let's do it. I want a really strong taste out of this. That's what I'm hoping for. Mm-hmm. And if I don't get it, war. War. <laughs> war with the neutrals. <laughs> right, I'm throwing this to you. Oof. Those hands, those <laughs> magic hands. Let's see if you can have the magic hands again. I can toss it right and I can catch it. I can't. Oh, <laughs> nice. I think we should start a baseball league. Baseball team. Yeah, baseball no, league. No, yeah not just a team, a whole league. You want to <laughs> stole <laughs> only outfielders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this smells pretty good. It's got a dark chocolatey smell. I like the look of it. It's got a really yeah. uh, oh, wow. smooth, dark sheen. Yeah, a little bumpy oh, yeah. on the bottom too. Mm-hmm. That smell. I'm excited for this. This smells more like the type of chocolate I wanted out of this. And I have a feeling that I'm going to want this combined with the almond one. Oh, dark chocolate almond. All right. I'm I'm going in. I forgot how thirsty chocolate makes me. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. As I said, I want the almonds. This might be a little too heavy on dark chocolate. Yeah. Kind of dry. It is. It's dry. I mean, like, I know that's the point of white chocolate and dark chocolate mm-hmm. to be on the opposite sides of the spectrum, but it's got the same, like, things I don't like about the white chocolate, just like a, a bolder taste about it. Yeah. Yeah. It might have gone a little too far. I can't tell if it went too far or not far enough for <laughs> Not far enough. I was expecting a heavier, more bitter dark chocolate. Yeah. I think that, yeah, it almost, it almost strangely went a little blander. Yeah, the dark did. chocolate. Mm-hmm. It's all about that almond. I feel like there's a middle ground between caramel almond and the ch- the dark one. I feel like there's something that can be done there. A strong. I want a stronger chocolatey taste from the almond one, and I want the almonds and a better taste mm-hmm. from the dark chocolate yep. one. I think it needs a little more saltiness. Yeah. It needs to be a little more creamy. Saltiness, and to be quite honest, it's not that sweet? Yeah. It's the dark not. chocolate? No. Any of them are kind of not mm. sweet. Maybe it's just the chocolatiness I'm missing, but yeah, yeah I don't know what I'm... I think the original one's kind of... I mean, like it's, it's hitting the right sweet spot as far as chocolate goes. This is our new segment called The Sweet Spot. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's really good chocolate. So yeah. if they made the original without the nougat and then the dark chocolate with the almond, you yeah. might have something going on You might have the there. perfect candy. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like... Much like Lord of the Rings and a struggle, <laughs> yeah, I, I read the Silmarillion. <laughs> the struggle between dark and light. I feel like they're the the dark chocolate and the milk chocolate has to sort of mix together in a way. I guess the light. I guess the light would be the white chocolate, but I do not want the white chocolate involved. There's a middle ground here for Toblerone, but we do not have it here today. Yeah. Are there more varieties that we have not? They tried today? throughout history there have been. Okay. There might be one like really specialized one out there, but yeah. like, this is all I saw. Like even looking online, like yeah. this seems to be all that's out there, at least okay. in Los Angeles. Maybe in Switzerland they've got Bayer yeah. flavored or <laughs> patent office flavor. Yeah. Did you say there was a, there there used to be a fruit and nuts one? There used to be. You know what oh, I just yeah. realized? Neutral. This wow, was a very neutral flavor. Was. Oh my god! A defining feature of them <laughs> now is yeah. that they're neutral. Is that they're neutral and they like pointy things. <laughs> they didn't want to take a risk. But, but so. much like what I was saying, of like I'm sure the Alps just being around influences like art and architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, I think their their neutral policy has yeah. influenced their flavors a little bit. That's kind of weird. We don't want to push too far in either direction. We are just happy yeah. in the middle. <laughs> we don't want to offend the Germans. <laughs> In case they win, which they might. But we also don't want to help out the French. You're right. That made me all that chocolate so fast. I'm like, Ugh. chocolate uh. does make you thirsty, but oh, yeah. gummy stuff kind of hurts my mouth. Like I get sores from eating too much of that. I feel sort that. Of thing. I feel yeah. that with the sour, especially with sour stuff. Especially with. But then again, with chocolate, if I eat enough of it, which I often do, I will also get a sore. So I can't oh, really complain. Oh, wow. Damn. Uh, I also have this disease you might have heard of. Um, <laughs> monkey, <laughs> a, a pox on monkeys. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So let's do a rating here. Out okay. of five cavities, five cavities being the best, what would you rate Toblerone? And I'm not going first because with the Carl Tart thing, I went first and I I went oh. out on a limb and you all just cut the limb off behind me. That's what you, you got to take a stance. Man. <laughs> you got to take it. a bold stance and stick to it. <laughs> Toblerone as a a whole or are we going individual? I mean let's talk about I don't know about what your favorite one was the the, the blue one the blue one uh, salted caramelized yeah. 
almonds. Let's do our favorite one and then overall. The salted one was for sure my favorite and I'd give that maybe like a 3.5. I think it's a strong contender. It is like the saltiness is the best feature about it but it also is making me crazy thirsty (laughs) and it'd be great with a beer. It it, it even says on the thing salted caramel. Yeah, it's aggressively salted. (laughs) But that was It's it's (laughs) assaulted. Burn! (laughs) (laughs) That was the best one and 3.5 is pretty. What about overall Toblerone? All of it? Okay, no Let's lay our favorite one and the yellow, the standard yellow. yellow. What would you give the standard yellow? Because no one's going out and buying the white chocolate. I hope to God no one's going out to buy the white (laughs) chocolate. There's a weirdo out there doing it. (laughs) Carl Tart. Oh, 2.5, I'd say. I say it's really, it's a really strong, rich chocolate taste. There's a lot of it. And the the box is fun and the shape of the candy and cracking it in a certain way. All that periphery stuff is a lot of fun. Yeah. Much like Butterfinger, it's a unique candy. Yeah. Especially the packaging, which is patented. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, my By idea. Albert Einstein. <laughs> I had an idea of stealing their idea. <laughs> I was going to put the actual Alps in a box like this. <laughs> I'm a super villain. I'd say like 2.5 for the yellow one. It's it's really good, but it's such a rich taste. Like uh, eating the one yesterday took like a lot of effort <laughs> and several hours. It wasn't something that was like... <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was like Picking in a corner, it. your shoulders being massaged by Ada. <laughs> I'm, 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 Cut me open. Cut me open. <laughs> it was. It's not something I would eat casually, and I wonder if that's what I needed in a candy. It's just something that like it's a specific situation, yeah. really. Toblerone. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily go to a movie theater with a Toblerone. Yeah, it's a special occasion candy, and it's great for being a special occasion candy. He, here's something because if you go in the airport and there's the duty free shop for international travelers, there is always Toblerone there. So it's almost like an airport candy or like a a, mm, a travel candy it's your it's travel yeah. candy. it's like a european mm. vacation <laughs> <laughs> national lampoons european, european vacations <laughs> toblerone yeah. what about you so it does seem very travel friendly uh the packaging is super fun it like is the fun. whole experience is really yeah. fun like eating a toblerone breaking it off yeah breaking it off is fun built-in portions yeah that's a good thing to it's, have it's really easy to share i yeah. love I, I loved all that about it but i loved the sharing part of this <laughs> I, I just wasn't really into the yellow one, the original Toblerone. Yeah. yeah. The chocolate was the best part for me. Everything else fell short. Yeah. It seemed kind of stale with that nougat. Wasn't super into it. It is a confuse. Uh, as you could see how I was trying to express how I felt about the dark chocolate, it's kind of a confusing candy bar. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's got a lot of different textures going on and it yeah. doesn't really know what it wants to be. <laughs> And like <laughs> neither do we. The, the original one isn't even that much like Switzerland. <laughs> it's not like too far of a stretch from being a crunch bar. Like there are enough similarities. It's a different sort of cr- like crunch bar. Like I, I wish said, it was more like a crunch. If that nougat was airy crispy, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, all day. This almost was like sandy. Yeah, mm-hmm. we all know sandy. sandy. <laughs> Sandy. Uh, that's my John Travolta. We've had a lot of John Travolta movies in this episode. <laughs> it, it's sandier rather than crunchy. Like it almost feels like you are eating it at the beach and like, th- right. what, did I accidentally put this in the sand? Yeah. D. So my favorite sand. was... <laughs> yes. A sand. <laughs> my favorite was also the almond, the yeah. salted almond one. Right. Delicious. I would give that one a three. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we're doing just the original, I'm going to stay neutral. 2.5. Pretty good. I, they would respect that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go full Mussolini on this one. Uh, <laughs> the, okay, we're, we're all, no question, the blue one, the salted caramelized one was the best one. Like, oh, I yeah. was not expecting that to be yeah. as good as it was. Mm-hmm. I would give that... I'm, I, I'm, when you said your ratings, I was like, Greg is exactly right. But I feel like I got to go a little higher than Greg. Cause I, I'm a little higher status than Greg. <laughs> Chocolate man. I would give the blue one, the salted caramelized one, a 3.7 Ooh. standard Toblerone. I'm, we're in agreement. Maybe for the first time, that is a 2.5. Wow. Cool. It's middle of the road. It is. It's very middle it's of the unique, road. It's unique. It's different. It's neutral of the road. Neutral road. Say it, <laughs> <laughs> all, I can, all I can say to that is a bad John Travolta impression. <laughs> Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you be excited to get this on Halloween? Have you ever seen this on mm-hmm. Halloween? This is not a casual yeah, candy no to be given. No, if, it is. Uh, this is like a you know expensive house in Bel Air. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I. The neutral prince of Bel Air. <laughs> no, I don't think I would. I mean, what? it. 
like a full size Toblerone. Yeah, size? you got one of these. You would be like, oh. I would be suspicious. <laughs> Is it a declaration of war? <laughs> Let's say they had a fun size and it was three of the triangle, oh, three of the L. That oh, is a great idea. Oh my God. That would be very interesting. And I would eat that. Yeah, I guess I they would didn't be. patent that. <gasps> we could do that. Yeah, we're about to do that. <laughs> Come get us. With- and, and they're called Toblerongs <laughs> because uh, that was my joke. Tober threes. <laughs> I changed my mind. Yeah. If I got a reasonable portion. It's just so shocking. Not, like even a big one. Like you can't deny like that's exciting. You can, well, they're expensive. So that's the only time I'd ever <laughs> get one. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. When I say something exciting, I mean it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. Yeah, I guess I would be excited. I'd be more surprised than excited. Right. Yeah. Like a snake in your bag. Like a snake in my bag. <laughs> Bag. I could see why it's in the bag, but how did it get there? <laughs> what about you? I would be super excited. And as my like once a year Toblerone, I'm down. <laughs> you do not need a Toblerone more than once a yeah, year you unless don't. you've got the Toblerone minis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would I would be excited. I, it'd be awesome. And then I would share it. Like I wouldn't need it by myself. Oh, I see that this. I didn't think about. Yeah. I thought about eating all of it and how bad it would make me feel. You selfish, <laughs> non neutral. <laughs> That's something Germany would do. <laughs> the very idea of sharing never even crossed my mind. Yeah, I would obvi- I would be excited. I-, I think I'm the biggest fan out of everybody oh, and yeah. I'm not even that huge of a fan anymore, really. But it, it would be it would be exciting for me. I'd be Yep. And and never have I ever seen that on Halloween. It's never going to happen. Yeah, it never but will the, happen. But two or three pieces, yeah. even if it was just one triangle. Yeah, one like, more triangle in the bag. That would be cool. That would be great. But it would have to have the paper, like one triangle yeah, 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 yeah. and the paper card. And, and you could wear it... Um, like a like a yellow triangle on your oh, clothing, too uh, soon. Much, like, <laughs> much like the country Switzerland refused to take a stand against. I mean, for a long time, let, let's get political here. For, oh, for a long time, people were like Switzerland, they're neutral, and they kind of gave them a pass. But I feel like in nowadays, people are not looking kindly on Switzerland's no, neutrality no, no. anymore. Right? They were they were textbook neutral, but they accepted so much money from the Nazis that they were not neutral. Really? Oh yeah, Swiss I did Bay, not know that's, that. I I felt I can't call, please search this, but I felt as if they remained neutral so that they could profit from all that money. Wow, okay. that's no ba- that's even worse than my reason for hating. European me. nations could deposit their money into a safe right, neutral right, right, location, right, right. Swiss, so banks. that it would be protected from repercussions after the war. Wow! So a, a lot of Nazi gold went the there. mythical Swiss bank account. Yeah, the Nazi gold, which is Huel Hauser's new show. <laughs> um, but he had a lot of strange ideas. But I also know that they were also prepared for a Nazi invasion, and they had like oh yeah, mountain tunnels and like guns mm-hmm. hidden just in case Germany invaded them. So it would be a hard nut to crack for sure. But <laughs> it would be a salted caramelized <laughs> almond to crack. But anyway, let's not. <laughs> We, we don't need to get more into the morality of Switzerland's position in World War II. So we've got a game. This is our first game submitted by a listener. Whoa. Whoa. That isn't our wife? <laughs> this is surprisingly, Melissa is not the only one listening to this wow, anymore. Wow, thank you, listener. That means so much to me. So this listener, his name is Zach Neenan. Hi, Zach. Uh, he Hi, Zach. Ri- he writes... Best. I'm trying to I'm trying to tell <laughs> something hey, nice to our guest. I'm trying to tell Zach he's the greatest alive, okay? <laughs> well, I, I won't deny that. He is no Switzerland. So he says, love both this show and L.A. Meekly. Oh, so nice. he, he carried over Super from L.A. Fan. Meekly. Or maybe he started with Candy is Dandy and went over to yeah, L.A. Meekly. That's a hard sell. Let us know, Zach. <laughs> yeah. That's like Nazi, Nazi <laughs> Germany trying to invade Switzerland. No, that would be like Switzerland invading Nazi Germany. Yeah. This is the Switzerland of podcasts, and L.A. Meekly is the Nazi <laughs> Germany. That's what they do with all the gold that the Nazis gave them. I got an idea. What if they just took the gold and were like, <laughs> we're, we're built bought guns with it? <laughs> the golden gun from, oh, from wow. Golden Eye. The game Golden Eye. Not the movie. Not the movie yeah. Golden Gun. Um, <laughs> so he says, I have always been astounded by how many weird band names there are out there. A possible candy game could be Giving Petto and Greg. Those are you, that's you two. Oh, that's me. That's me. The name of either an obscure candy or band name and see if they could guess what it is. Ooh. Okay. So he said, I took a quick swipe at Google and Spotify and came up with a list to provide the concept <laughs> and get your creative juices flowing. Disclaimer, I have never had any of these candies or listened to any of these bands. So hopefully you won't draw conclusions about my personality from either, <laughs> which we already have. Just, <laughs> just because you are in an episode where we talked about Switzerland, <laughs> we have compared you to a country that's guilty by association. <laughs> guilty by my lack of association. <laughs> okay, so uh, I have several of them. You can okay. tell me when you want to stop. So so the game is the, whether it's to, a candy or a band? 
band or candy. We have a whole dance. The the girls in the pyramids come out. <laughs> we, just, we just get too horny and we can't even play the game. Okay, yeah, I'm going to give you the name of something. You tell me if it's a candy or a band. Okay. Sour Flush. Damn. That's both a good name for candy. But yeah. I'm going to say a candy. I'm going band. It's a candy. Whoa. A sour flush. I can't imagine what that is. But I would never eat a candy disgusting. called a flush. Yeah, anything with like gushers. It must yeah. be like a garbage oh, pail. A sour gusher. A garbage pail kid sort of thing. Next one, camel butter. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> band. I'm going ba- band. Yeah, I'm going to go band too. I don't want... That's a band. Hell All yeah. right. Rock out! <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome. <laughs> Next one, mild orange. I'm going to say a band. I want to say band, which is why I'm going to say candy. <laughs> it's a band. Oh! Mild or it's a, they're a relative of Simply Red. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it Simply Red or is that the gum? gum? Simply Red is a gum. Big Blonde what? Redhead is a band. No, no, no. There's a band called Simply Red, isn't there? Uh, the Googles will tell us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, get the well, newsboy. Last, let me ask my supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, his, that's his heart meter. <laughs> Big Red is the gum. Simply yeah, Red Big is the Red. band. Yep. Simply Red is a pop band. Or it's just a singer, maybe. Simply uh, Red. Uh, Simply Red, a British soul and pop band formed in 1985 in Manchester. What's there their big hit? Their big hit is, is Big Red. Yeah. <laughs> I, I eat gum on my gum. Holding back <laughs> the years. Okay. If you don't know me by now. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, a That's a cover. That's a cover. That's a cover. Everybody stop. That's a cover. Hey, don't sing it. It's a cover. <laughs> song by Simply Red. Okay. But a cover of who? Like an old soul song? Yeah. Oh. If you don't, it, it was like the, not the stir. It's a lowrider oldie. I don't know that. <laughs> by Simply Red. Yeah. The song is by George Lopez, uh, the, the king of oldies <laughs> and lowriders. Here's the next one. <laughs> we can't afford that. Um, the next one is Orange Stick. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> suck on my orange stick. <laughs> Immediately Lopez arrested. <laughs> Is that Jim Morrison up there? Get him out of here. You're not allowed back here. Uh, I'm going to say a candy. <laughs> it's a bad. <laughs> it's a bad. It's a band. Whoa! Orange stick. Orange stick. Yeah. And his big hit. If you still know me, <laughs> you are never, never, never going to succeed in life. Hi, right. No. Uh, okay, so the next one, Big and Slim. Candy bar. Band. It's a band. Wow. A it's band or a rapper? Or a reggae band. Is, a, is a rapper not a one-man band? <laughs> the next one we've got is Cream Colon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's band all day, baby. I could eat that, but I'm going to say it's a band. It's a candy. <laughs> what? It's a candy. The cream colon. It's uh, what you eat before you have the sour flush. <laughs> oh. The next one, crunch fruit. I'm going to say candy. I'm all over the place now. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm all discombobulated. Crunch fruit. It's a candy. There's really like no way you could know. It's a band. Crunch fruit oh is a band. Oh my what? God. Uh, and the next one, the Beatles. Uh, <laughs> candy. Both. How do they spell it? <laughs> so a uh, happy egg. That's a Candy. candy. To candy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I gave it away by saying a happy egg. Yeah. Honey be sweet. If you said the happy eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Honey be sweet, I'm going to say as an R&B singer. I'm going to say music. I'm going to say it's a Korean candy and it got lost in translation. It's a band. Oh, it's a band. Wow. Honey be sweet. It's Johnny B. Good's girlfriend. Oh, it's, <laughs> he stopped being good after he dated her. Okay. Toe of Satan. <laughs> it's a band. A Christian rock band. It's a metal band. Uh, I'm going to say band, too. It's a candy. What, what the hell? I'm looking this up right yeah. now. Look up a toe of Satan. I don't know what. I Turn on is. the safe filter, though. I don't yeah. want to see anything scary. I got all these feet websites. <laughs> oh. It what does it look can- like? Describe uh, it to me. I think it's like something hot. It's a lollipop. Oh, yeah. It's a hot Show lollipop. Me? It looks like And it a- has like a little lollipop in a coffin. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. It looks like a sex toy. Oh, Ooh. well, yeah, when, it's in, when it's out of the packaging, yes. But the other one yeah, it looks, like looks a pretty little, cool. It looks like a lollipop tongue. And it's got a little Satan. Yeah. The people are into <laughs> So, yeah, I'm sure you can do strange things with your yeah. well, if, toe of Satan. If you want to ruin a candy or make it better. If you want to talk about uh, other weird things you can do with stuff, the last one we have is camel balls. Well, camel camel cream. What was the other one? Oh, carrot. That was camel butter. Was a band. Camel butter, butter was a. We can't have two camel bands. No. Nah, it's a candy. It's a candy. Yeah, it's a candy. Woo! Camel it's balls a candy. made out of band members. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to email us a game, if you want to be as good as Zach Neenan, the Switzerland of listeners. <laughs> 
We're sorry. You can <laughs> email us, or if you just have comments, listener questions, whatever, email us candy is dandy podcast at gmail.com. Please subscribe and leave a review for the show. It helps us out on Apple Podcasts. It gives us more cachet, which Ooh. is a band. <laughs> uh, you can follow us on social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, Candy is Dandy Pod, where we'll be on TikTok, we'll be putting the autopsies and the vivisections mm-hmm. on there. And same with Instagram and Twitter. We'll post, you'll know what candy we're doing in advance, so you can go buy it. Yep. Go to go to World's Market. Uh, support us on Patreon, if you could, at patreon.com slash candy is dandy. Right now, it's just financial support to keep the show afloat. These are imported Swiss chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, Things not... are getting expensive. This is getting out of control. I couldn't even buy it. Yeah, he, he couldn't buy it. He had to share. <laughs> we had to share. That's what happens when you don't have money. You have to share. He's got stopped at customs. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't bribe the border agent. <laughs> we would love to have your financial support to keep this going. You could give any amount really on there. But if we get enough of you, we will start doing bonus episodes every month where we do the same format of the show, but we review cookies. Mm. I will eat cookies for money. Show me the money <laughs> first, though. <laughs> so uh, that's been our Tobler. This is our international episode. We got to get back in the country now. We specifically got into international waters just to record <laughs> this. We'll be back at you in a couple of weeks with our next episode. And I uh, hope you have a... Happy Halloween. Don't say that yet. Oh, We're going to oh, see yeah. them one more time before Halloween. Uh, Do not wish anyone Halloween. Have a nice Halloween season. We're, two rules on this show. Yeah. Don't wish people happy Halloween <laughs> unless it's Halloween. And don't sing cover songs. <laughs> Do not oh. sing cover songs. So have a... Have a gray neutral day. <laughs> Have a merry, 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 merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, no, I did it. That week, no, that we can do all year round. We can wish for merry, quiz, great, merry Christmas. You can, you can do a cover of Paul McCartney and you can make it seasonal. So, uh, yeah, have a pointy girls in pyramid day yeah. for all of you. Have a geometric horny day. <laughs> and remember, everybody, keep the Nazis out of Switzerland. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.